Are you tired of your boat not fitting in your garage? Maybe you pay for storage because your garage is not big enough to store your boat in. Mainly because the tongue is probably about 16 inches too long. You wish you had a trailer with a fold away tongue? Well Fulton makes a kit that will make your normal boat trailer into a fold away tongue. This is what it looks like. And I'm going to be installing it step by step. You guys can follow along. I'm going to give you a couple tips and tricks on how to install these a little faster, a little better. I've installed these before, they work great. You just want to make sure that you order the proper kit. Like this is the 3x3 three three, and that means that the trailer tongue is 3 inches wide by 3 inches wide. They make several different kits. Just make sure you order the right kit for your trailer. Now, first thing you want to do, I like to put the uh, trailer onto a vehicle, latch it down, and then the first thing you're going to want to do is move your tongue jack back. Now, the jack needs to be behind wherever the breakaway is. If right here is your fold, you need the tongue jack back on the original part of the trailer. So I'll show you here what I did, and then you can't just cut it anywhere you want on the trailer. Uh, there's some math and there is a uh, direction to follow of where you need to cut your trailer. So we'll do that next. All right, so once you got your trailer attached to a vehicle, make sure you lock it down. Uh, because once you cut it, uh, this part here is going to fall, but if you have it attached to your trailer ball, uh, it will not fall off. I usually throw like a, a pillow underneath that. And your jack stand, as you can see right there, is going to be back on this side, which is going to hold up the rest of the boat trailer. So in order to determine where you're going to cut the tongue, there's an install instruction right here. Now here is the 3x3, three three, and you need to know your gross trailer weight rating. So this one is 3,500 pounds. So the max pivot length is 36 inches and what they mean by that is from the center of your ball which is right here measuring back 36 inches along the trailer that's the max you can you can have uh, you can go anywhere shorter you just don't want to go any longer so as you can see this white line right here that's at about 28 inches, and it's just kind of a good place uh, to cut for this trailer. Now here is the old mounting of the uh, tongue jack, and I slid that back about as far as I could. I operated it, uh, you know, just to make sure that it doesn't hit anything. And then I'm coming forward about six inches from that, and that's where I'm gonna put the breakaway. So what you want to do, once you have your line marked, you're going to want to use a square. Well, I don't care what kind of square you use. Something like this. And then you're going to draw a line all the way around your trailer tongue. All right, once you got your line marked all the way around the tube, it's time to cut it. But have you guys figured out what the issue is yet? Your trailer wiring. The trailer wiring runs right through this tongue. So, if you have new trailer wiring, uh, I suggest you either fish it out of there or probably kiss it goodbye. So the nice thing about this trailer is, I'm replacing the wire anyway. As you can see, this is all original. Uh, it's spliced in several places. So I ordered a wiring kit. Once I cut through here, uh, there's usually, I think I've only cut one wire in the past. You usually don't cut through the wires, you usually nick them. But once I cut it, I'm gonna cut the wires, pull those through, and then I'm going to continue on with installing the breakaway and then we'll install all new wiring at the end. 
Well, the best way that I found to cut these is with a, this is like a four and a half, five inch uh, grinder. Uh, this you can buy at Harbor Freight. And then I have one of these thin cutoff wheels. Four and a half inch, 60 grit, metal, thin cutoff wheel. So once you cut through your trailer tongue, it should look something like that. And as you can see, since I have it connected to the ball, it doesn't fall on the floor. You don't need a helper or anything doing it this way. Like I said, I'm replacing all the wiring in this trailer anyway. So I'm just going to cut the wiring. And now the next thing you want to do is deburr this edge all the way around, inside and outside. Uh, you don't want any sharp edges on neither one of these tubes. So we'll go ahead and grind all those edges next. Now that your tube is cut, this part of the fold away goes on to your trailer. The other part goes on to the tongue. And then you're going to need to transfer these hole locations to the trailer. And I like to use this Sharpie, it's an oil based white paint pen. So I'm just going to kind of hold this in, color in these holes to transfer the hole locations. And you're going to do that top and bottom, four on the top, four on the bottom. Once you have your hole locations all marked, go ahead and pull this off. And now you're going to want to put a spot punch, prick punch, or a nail set. Something to put a small indentation in the center of these white circles. And that little indentation will be where your drill bit's going to go. If you don't do that, your drill bit's going to kind of uh, wobble and walk around on you. Uh, so if you don't have something like this, then I suggest use the smallest drill bit possible, maybe like a 16th or a 32nd, and drill very slowly. Uh, anything bigger than that, it's going to wobble around, you're going to lose location. So you just kind of eyeball the center. And that puts a nice little dimple for your drill bit to start in. Now that you've got all of your pilot holes drilled, I used an eighth inch drill bit. I'm going to open them up to a quarter of an inch. And then that will allow me to use my step drill. Or, if you don't have a step drill, I would go eighth inch, quarter inch, three eighths, probably seven sixteenths, and then half inch. Don't try to hog out the half inch hole uh, without stepping up your drill bits. Now this step drill does quarter inch all the way up to three quarter. Maybe you can see that on there. Quarter inch, five sixteenths, three eighths, seven sixteenths, half inch. So I put a little white line on the nine sixteenths and I know not to go any deeper uh, than this one right here. And that's how you use a step drill. So this hole here is at one half of an inch. I'll go ahead and continue to do that on the four top and the four bottom. Uh, if you don't have one of these, just continue stepping up your drill sizes all the way up to a half inch. Now well, this is the hardest part of this whole job is drilling these four holes in the bottom here. Uh, the tongue part that you cut away, it's easier 
to drill those eight holes because you can kind of flip it over and always drill from the top. But these four here are the toughest part of the job. I suggest you use a, a jacket or a sleeve because these chips are gonna fall on your arm and they're very hot. Uh, if you're gonna be right under it, then I also suggest a face shield. Once you have all your holes drilled, you need to take the burr off of all the holes. You can use your hand grinder and a hand file or whatever tools you have in your garage like some sandpaper. But you need to remove all the burrs so the heads of the bolts and the nuts sit nice and flat. Once you have all of this deburred, then you're gonna take this part, looks like this, is gonna go on your trailer like this. It does not go like this. This way, on like that, and then on the tongue side, should be like this so that it fits together something like that and your tongue is nice and straight so pre-check to make sure all this fits before bolting anything together now grab your bag of bolts and we'll start putting the bolts in now the directions don't say to use it but I used the blue Loctite 242, put that on all of your bolts, and then screw all of your shoulder bolts on. So they supply you with this T55. Now the easiest thing to do is get a, right there, hopefully you can see it, 11 millimeter socket. That fits right in there. Just like that. And then on the inside, use a three quarter inch wrench and tighten to 75 foot pounds. Go ahead and do that on all 16 bolts. Once all your bolts are tightened down, go ahead and put your tongue onto the trailer. Get the large 5 8 bolt. Give it a good coating of grease. And then you're going to drop that into this side. Just like that. And then you want your nylock nut on the bottom of here and tighten that to 50 foot-pounds. There's gonna be two black rubber plugs that come in a bag. One goes right here, the other one right here. Just push in, twist, they'll go right in. That's what it should look like all complete. And as a side note, if you get one of the newer models that hasn't been laying on the shelf a while, they do supply you with one of these transfer punches. Now, if you have... So that's what the assembly looks like completed. And if you get a newer model, it's going to come with this little transfer punch for center punching those holes. If you get a model that's been sitting on the shelf for a while, uh, it will not have one of these in it. I've done a couple of these kits. Some have them, some don't. All right, so at this point, we need to remove the old safety chains. Uh, the new safety chains need to be attached behind the pivot point, which is gonna need to be about right in here. 
So we're going to go about one inch up, drill our half inch holes, and install new safety chains. So once you have your new safety chains attached, it should look something like this. And I just reused the safety chain bolt. As you can see right there is the original hole. And I just reused the bolt back there. Uh, the new kit does not come with your safety chain bolt. Now as far as the chains go, uh, this is the type of chains that I use. They're quarter inch uh, by 10 feet. And that usually leaves you about a foot left over as far as chain length. So now that it's all installed, it should fit in your garage perfectly. No reason for you to keep your boat at storage anymore or outside. Hope this video was informative to you. I want to put all the links in the description box for everything I've used. And I thank you for watching.